Good afternoon, brilliant humans, and welcome back to KubeCon Cloud Native Con here in Chicago. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with Dustin Kirkland, our fabulous guest analyst wow. for the show. Brilliant humans, fabulous analyst. <laughs> you're uh, you're in a good mood. <laughs> Can you tell us the last segment? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know I love doing it. How are you feeling? End of day three for you. First time covering with us, not just as a guest, but as an analyst. Yeah. You're smiling, uh, which yeah. is a good sign. Having a good time. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Can't wait for Paris. Is it too soon? No, it it's too not too soon. soon. Okay. We, can, we can definitely All talk right. about that. Yeah. I am excited to welcome our guest for the show and your pocket square soul brother over here. Please welcome, <laughs> please welcome Bobby and Sahil. It's so nice to have you both here. Love it. You're from the Google Cloud team. Talk to me about how the show's been for you so far. Bobby, let's start with you. What are you seeing? So, one, I have to admit, this is my first KubeCon, and I love the community <gasps> welcome, aspect. Welcome. Whoa! It is so inclusive KubeCon here. Virgin. It's uh, It's so inclusive here, you can tell that people just give on-ramps for people that are new to the community. You've got some OGs yeah. that have kind of been in this for years, and so I love just the way all of that mixes together to have this beautiful tapestry of people that are learning together and adding value for customers. Such a good point, Bobby. It really is inclusive. I feel very welcome here. We had we had the, the deaf and hearing impaired working group on the show earlier today. Mm -hmm. They're actually making the conference more inclusive. The wow. whole situation is awesome. What about for you? Just like Bobby, I'm new first KubeCon myself. What? Yes. I had wow. no idea. Wow, how exciting. Yes, uh, and uh, like Bobby, I really, really enjoyed this. This is like top, getting to know so many people. The community was fantastic. Um, yeah. Walking the show floor. Getting to see all the different innovation and where Kubernetes is going is fantastic. I, I, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, this, wow, you picked a good show to come to. The energy is really thriving. Excellent. I feel like Excellent. we're back in full swing. It's awesome. Yep. Look, I, I think we, we've noticed on, on the show and in our conversations, and it feels like Kubernetes has reached a point of maturity a bit, where it's almost becoming the intel inside. We're talking about it just a little bit less, but we're seeing a lot more execution mm -hmm. through it. Is that congruent with the experience that you've had, and how is Kubernetes fitting into the Google ecosystem? Yeah. Bobby, I'll ask you that question. So, so obviously Kubernetes is a huge part of the Google ecosystem. Uh, we contributed that back to the community, open sourced it nine and a half years ago. And so what we're doing is we're introducing here at KubeCon the new evolution of Kubernetes, which we call GK Enterprise. And so this is about having what I call the right kind of CAS, containers as a service, not confusion the as right a service. The right kind of right? CAS, it's even got like a so little swagger to it, service. I like it. So let, <laughs> let's make sure that we're adding the right features that customers need without unnecessary complexity. So that's really what this is about. We're going to unpack that Always a little bit the game. on the program, give people the features they need, but also keep it simple, right? Because people need to make sure they can focus on the business innovation, not just the tech stuff. Yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. No, perfect. It's uh, what we're seeing right now with this new evolution. We are looking to help our uh, customers and the industry overall increase the velocity for their development and deployment. How do you securely deploy and run your most critical business application and then to reduce your overall total cost of ownership with a fully managed uh, platform. So we are super excited. A lot of yeah. customers are already getting a lot of benefit. So we have uh, customers like HSBC, uh, Ulta, uh, Equifax, and broader customers, they are seeing like 45% increase in productivity Whoa, 45% is massive. It is, it is great. That's huge. Yes, it's huge. And 70% decrease in the deployment time. Mm -hmm. Fantastic results. Wow. We are really, really it's excited about this. Winning on both this. sides of the ball. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, better, faster, stronger, it's awesome. And, and that's always been the challenge with, with Kubernetes, was that complexity and that on-ramp. Yes. And I feel like the jets are able to take off real smooth now. It's, it's right. a totally different ballgame. I got one for Bobby. Yes. Super experienced product manager at Google. Mm -hmm. I know one of the key uh, rubrics when interviewing uh, as a former product manager at Google is being able to explain a complex topic okay. in a simple way. Okay. All right, Kubernetes. Explain Kubernetes for, I've got, I've got daughters, 10 and 11 year old daughters. How would okay. you explain Kubernetes to someone who's you know, not a senior product manager at Google? So I would say <laughs> sim simply, the simple answer is Kubernetes is a platform to build platforms. But what it is, is it's a palette to create the things that you need to create value for your customers. Wow. And so you've got lots of flexibility, lots of freedom. One of the things I talk to customers about is the fact that everything new isn't good and everything old isn't bad. And really, success now is about mastering the remix of the new and the old, and Kubernetes kind of brings those things together. How do I master infrastructure, but also give people the, the freedom and the creativity to create the brand new things that may not exist yet? Wow, a palette, I like that. Yeah, I, I, we had Bob Ross Chia Pet on the show earlier. Oh. We, there's, there's a little <laughs> bit of a palette of painting theme going Beautiful on. little clouds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see you're, all, you're also a fan. We'll just all be, we'll, we'll be up here doing a painting segment before we, yeah. go, before we know it. See, Hall, can you tell us a little bit more about the GKE Enterprise? 
Yeah, um, so with GK Enterprise, we've been talking with lots of customers, and one of the key things, like you said, Kubernetes is kind of going through this evolution. It yeah. used to be like uh, Intel Inside. I love that analogy, right? So, oh, that makes me feel really good yeah, coming from the Googles. Yeah, it's like, fantastic. All right, I'll um, keep saying it. So when we talk with our customers, they themselves are helping many, many different teams. So how do you onboard your teams quickly so that they can start delivering their applications faster? So one thing about GKE Enterprise right now is customers will be able to now create multiple teams, help them onboard very quickly through self-service capabilities. The second thing is built-in security. Security, and you see this on the floor as well, security, security, security. We are now, we have platform layer security, Kubernetes layer security, and now workload layer security. All built in, so integrated important. by default, right? And the third thing is, Kubernetes, Kubernetes needs lots of different things. How do I better understand the, my, improve my day to operations, cost optimization, improve my security, how do I put in the right governance controls so I can manage my costs? Uh, or make sure that I have the right compliance models built into my uh, infrastructure. That's what GK Enterprise does. All tied together as a managed service. Savannah, can I, really? can I plus one to that? Yeah, of course I think you a can, lot Bobby. Of, Snehal kind of walked through a lot of the features we're giving. When I have this executive conversation, they want to balance innovation and operations. Help me do the cool stuff, but help me not go broke in the process, right? Yeah, and so and that's the combination they need. And not have a, a problem or risk. You know, yeah. it's, it's all yes. that non-sexy stuff that you were just talking about, the compliance, yes. the governance. I yes. mean, yes. it's so important, and especially when we're talking about an open source collaborative community, you've got a yes. lot of people who want to build things, but if it's not secure, it's chaos. It I is. think we, we want to maximize innovation and minimize unintended consequences, right? Amen, that could be said across the board. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, Bobby, I just noticed uh, your title on LinkedIn, which uh -oh, I think is one of go. the best titles I think I've ever seen. Thank you. Oh. And you got to tell me what this is. Okay. Cloud therapist. What's a cloud therapist, so, Bobby? So cloud therapist awesome. is, is I know. because I, I did 10 years of startups before joining Google a couple years ago, and that's because a lot of times before you talk about transformation in tech, people need to lay on the couch and cry first because there's a <laughs> lot of good and bad stuff that happened before we showed up. <laughs> and we want people to understand that we're there to listen first of all. We're not there to knock you in the head with technology as if that's a magic bullet. Right. There's some, there's some things that we need to listen for before just throwing yep. products at you. What are the outcomes you're trying to achieve? Yep. What are the challenges you're trying to fix? And so, for example, Dustin, I really don't like people process technology. I like people process problem. Mm. And technology is kind of behind the scenes sure. as you're solving a challenge for a person. Yeah. No, I mean, that's dripping with empathy and that customer empathy uh, you know, certainly comes through, uh, Bobby. Cloud Therapist is a great title. You. you know, I'm going to share something that I learned earlier today when we had the deaf and hard of hearing working group on the show. This is actually how you say cloud in sign wow. language. So now we, now, and you can move the cloud around, so it's okay. moving around, which is okay. cool. So now we're including our audience and your okay. cloud therapist. Maybe, I don't know how to say therapist yet, Very but, cool. but, but we're working we'll, we'll on that. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah, figure we'll out. figure it out. Yeah. I, this is your first KubeCon for both of you, which is wild. Mm -hmm. See, Hall, what do you hope you can say at the next KubeCon when we're in Paris? Ooh, very interesting question. At the end of the day, I think we really want to help our customers take the uh, power of uh, Kubernetes and to really run their businesses. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how do you bring the new workloads? Like one thing that Bobby talks about is, you don't need a new platform. What you really need is how do you continue to build on the platform so you can bring new workloads like AIML directly and really supercharge your business. That's what we're looking to go do. Beautiful, I, I love that. Workload's definitely a big conversation here. What about you, Bobby? What do you want to be saying next time you're on the stage here with I, us? I want us, I want us to say that Kubernetes is the present and the future. Mm. In the mm. sense that, you know, obviously this has been the year of AI, and so we want to make sure that we're hooking AI to a lot of the stuff we're doing today, because a lot of people are talking about AI, but they're not ready for AI. So this is how we say it. New workloads don't require a new platform this time. Right, when we move from bare metal to virtual, mm -hmm. oh shucks, I've got to build something new, I've got to purchase something new virtual to containers, but this time, the containerized platform is the thing that can run the AI workloads and the enterprise workloads really side by it. side, so yeah. that's what I hope that we've got is this kind of kumbaya, where the new, the new kids and the old kids are kind of running together on things like GK Enterprise, that's what I want to see. Mm. And that's that's really at the core of the culture of the CNCF community is the is the is the new kids and the old kids all playing together to make yes. the best things possible yes. for a brighter future for all of us. Yes. With Kubernetes coming out of Google, is this is this kind of like a homecoming for you all? Do people do you think that everyone in the community knows that it was originally a, a, a Google child, or do you think do you feel like we're now so ubiquitous that Kubernetes is its own little standalone entity? 
Ah, what do you I, think? I think? I think a lot of people do know, but I think the more important part of that is one, Google is very much about community, so we love the fact that people have uh, kind of gathered around this campfire, so to speak, of innovation. Mm -hmm. Google's continue to be a huge contributor, right? Over a million contributions to Kubernetes, so we're leading in uh, what my boss a million? would say. million, holy moly. Over a million contributions. That's real right there. Which, which we call that the chopping wood and carrying water, right? It's not the glamorous stuff, but to keep yeah. it going and really to keep funneling that engine for innovation. So we love that, but, but we also don't want to rest on our laurels. So it's not just we contributed this, mm -hmm. what are you doing with it, right? So I think in many ways, Kubernetes and technology need to become like electricity. We won't talk about it, we'll talk about what we do with it, what are the benefits we get from it. 100%. And so if people don't necessarily know the origin story, but they understand the customer outcomes like Snehal talked about, increased developer velocity, better security, balancing innovation and operations, we're good with that. You mentioned the customer there, actually, and I want to lean into that. Are you seeing Kubernetes adoption much more broadly across customer segments now? Yeah. yeah see, and how does yeah. that tie back to GKE Enterprise? Yeah, I know, fantastic. So, right now, we are, I think the Gartner statistics, basically, uh, right now, 40% of uh, global enterprises run production uh, applications on Kubernetes. By 2027, they expect 90% will do that. That's wow. just going to continue to increase. Wow. So we are, and we are seeing that across the board. What we are seeing is that that adoption is not Wild. just uh, across the cloud, but on-prem as well, like you, you've been working on-prem. A lot more of the tier one applications are now starting to be in production on Kubernetes. And that's fantastic, because that's a core business. That's what's going to do Kubernetes, and that's the exciting part. And that's where GKE Enterprise really comes in. Now that you have the tier one applications, how do you actually put the right guardrails? So how do you secure yeah. it? How do you run that securely across the board? That's what we are looking to go do. Is there an application, and this is more of a person, this is your personal perspective, not necessarily you're yeah. wearing your Google Cloud hat. Is there an application of Kubernetes or a project that you've seen here that really has you excited? Any fan it's, favorites? It's hard to pick one, honestly. That's like picking your favorite child. That's a tough <laughs> one. There, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of things that are very interesting. There's some, I'll say there's, there's some things that are there's some things that are interesting for later, right? Science for a project, but then there are other things that are interesting for now, right? Around like how we do load balancing better, how we balance mm -hmm. scale better, how we run more stateful workloads, all things that Google's leaned into quite a bit. So I'm going to have to tap out on that one, honestly, Savannah. <laughs> I don't have a good answer because I don't want to make anybody mad. That is a politically correct answer right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that, is, that is diplomatic. You must be in leadership. Thank answer you. that. Do you have a favorite project? I'm going to piggyback <laughs> on what he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Yes. Don't play along with my game then. See how I feel. Do you have a favorite project, Dustin? Oh, uh, I, I. You have I'm, to pick one now. I, no, no, no. I'm going <laughs> to learn from the best here. I'm going to follow and learn from the best. What are some rough spots? What are some of the rough spots that you think we need to smooth over? And you know, this could be customer feedback you're yeah. hearing. Like, where are their sore points? I think the. I think Tim Hawken hit on it in the keynote. There is a complexity budget that we mm -hmm. have to be conscious of. Mm -hmm. Like, we can fall in love with the tech so much. Tech for the sake of tech doesn't get it done, and so, again, back to the cloud therapy for a second. One of my kind of Bobbyisms or mantras is technology is the easy part of tech. The longer version is tech is the easy part, people are the best part, behavior is the hard part, humility is the worst part. Oh, wow. And oh, so, wow. it is so hard to change behavior. That's where a lot of the complexity is, and so we need to make sure we're balancing, don't, do, don't do incremental improvement when there's a lot of technology or complexity, right? The juice has to be worth the squeeze. I think that's still an Achilles heel for the community. Yeah. Right you talk, I, I, yeah, I think that's actually a really good point, and, and tech just for tech's sake doesn't matter. You mentioned AI earlier and you had kind of a nice comment. Obviously a buzz in both the, the keynotes and the conversations, the hallway track here, but I'm curious, where do you, this is a great, interesting question coming from Google, where do you think we're at in terms of this AI hype curve? Are we very early? Are you seeing any applications that are relevant yet, or is everyone still just kind of pretending that anything pulling from an API is generative? It is, it is still pretty early in yeah. the game. Um, I'll say that we'll, uh, I want to make this palatable for the folks that are not AI experts, and I'm not an AI expert even though I work at Google, let me just say that. But I'll say, we're doing a lot of training right now, right? We're doing right. a lot of training, and I think it's going to shift to inference, and for the layman who may not know what that means, or the laywomen who may not know what that means on the, on the program, training is when you're on the practice field, inference is when you're in the game. So what does it look like to put AI in the game and get real value from it? I think that's going to be the shift that we see, but it's still really early right now. We're still training a lot of stuff. There's some replication, some overlap. As we figure out how to get more value out of that, it's going to be, okay, we don't need to train anymore. Let's actually put this to use at the edge, in the data center, and in the cloud. 
Do you agree, Sunil? Uh, yes, uh, I think we are seeing a lot of good applications, mm -hmm. but we are kind of excited about it. Well, maybe more at uh, KubeCon at, uh, in yeah, Paris. Yeah, maybe in Paris. Maybe yes. we'll be, maybe we'll we'll be having baguettes that. and talking about, yes. talking about more AI when we're we there. We were this close this close to a segment without saying AI. Uh -oh. And you busted it right <laughs> there. He mentioned it earlier. Bobby had already said it. Bobby had already said it. Yeah. Come on, we got to stay consistent. All right, all right. <laughs> it is the theme of the show, it seems like. No, well, I mean, it definitely is. Yeah. And well, and I, I think there's so much conversation and hype. It's a lot of gaslighting right now to a well, degree. Yeah, and, I, and, yeah. and yeah, and it kind of hurts my soul a little bit as, as someone who talks to people because it's not, like you said, it's not being implemented yet. It's yeah. not running and executing and I, I, yeah, I think it's really interesting. We're, we're, we're seeing too, Savannah, just to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go, but it's just all about What's you, happening Bobby. is a lot of our salespeople are fielding calls from customers who want to talk AI and part of the empathetic way to deal with that is not to say you're not ready for AI, we show up to talk about AI but we understand the conversation pivots to how do we get you ready for AI? And that's part of why we came out with something like GK Enterprise because it future-proofs you for the AI stuff but also gives you benefit today. I think that's brilliant and I actually think that's a wonderful note to close on. Snehil and Bobby, thank you both so much for being here. We love talking to the Google Cloud team. We look forward to seeing you in Paris at your second KubeCon, which will be absolutely fantastic. Thank Dustin you. Kirkland, star of this week, thank you so much for being here and Thanks. for offering your insights and thank all of you for tuning in. Without our wonderful Cube community, there is no one here at KubeCon. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE here in Chicago, live 